Hey guys, Thomas the Soda Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, and once again here to do my monthly horror reviews. So, we're here with the movie Zombieland Double Tap. So, this movie takes place obviously a few years later. Literally and figuratively, I suppose. Um, as we follow uh, Columbus, or I'll, I'll shorten his name to just Cull, Tallahass Tallahassee, which I'll just call Tal. Wichita and Little Rock are making their way to the White House as their new temporary home. And Little Rock wants to make her own distance, have make her find her own relationships. She's grown up, wants to find someone in her own age to uh, court with in the apocalypse world. And in the trailers we see her attempt to hook up with this uh, stoner guy uh, named Berkeley. We also see that uh, Wichita and Little Rock leave, and then Little Rock leaves uh, Wichita. And within that leaving, um, Call feels hurt and abandoned once again. So, in the spring of the moment, he comes across a new girl named Madison, to whom they share a sexual experience. And as soon as that's done, and shortly after it's done, they, him and Tal, come across Wichita returning, saying that she needs help, that she, uh, Little Rock has run off with this new guy, and that they need to go travel to go get her. So they go begin their traveling, and they have to take a uh, vehicle on the highway, in which more hijinks ensue, in which we see Little Rock's adventure of her own uh, as she's way ahead. And uh, eventually uh, the three remaining characters come across uh, various zombies in which to either avoid or kill or do whatever which, which with two. Um, they eventually upgrade or downgrade I should say to another vehicle um, so they they travel. Uh, Tal has what has wanting to do nothing with that vehicle, so they want to, he wants to go off the beaten path. But no matter how many times they try to get a new vehicle, something bad happens. So they go after this bus. They get in the bus. They're all excited. The bus like crashes under this a few minutes, uh, and within that time frame, they get attacked by various zombies. And we learn more about this world's rules and how the zombies are becoming modified. Uh, there are the weaker zombies and then there are the stronger zombies apparently now. In which case the characters have their names for these character for the for these types of zombies. The dumb and slow zombies have been dubbed Homer as in a reference to uh, obviously the Simpsons and the the more intelligent zombies have been dubbed Hawkings, and there are also the variants within that of ninja zombies, and I think there was like one other one that, another type, that was just like, I forget the name of it, so, um, but they come across what they refer to as the T-1000, a Terminator reference, as a zombie that even after getting shot several times, keeps going and going and going. Um, so they have to completely make sure to dismantle that type of zombie as they're becoming a more and more commonplace thing and they make their first encounter there. So they make it back to the van after hiking it back to the van and they travel some more. Uh, so they make their way to this area where um, there's this big Elvis Presley sort of monumental area and they meet the new character Nevada who's pretty much set up there for Tal to have a relationship with. Uh, they hook up at the end. I'm just gonna say that now. Spoiler alert I guess. Um, but I mean it is kind of obvious as soon as you see her you're gonna go like oh yeah they're probably gonna be a thing. Uh, so they, they uh, hook up over some music over well uh, Elvis Presley since they're in that location. Uh, more hijinks ensue within the building. Uh, 
where they come across two other individuals, I forget their names, um, but you see them in the trailer when um, Wichita makes a comment of how similar they are to the two male leads. Um, so the two of them meet their two male counterparts and we have a long gimmick of uh, commandments as the other guy refers to them and uh, calls uh, rules uh, to live by in the zombie apocalypse and they go back and forth and they're obviously having a contest of like which one's better uh, there's sl there's only slight variants of the same thing essentially and the bit goes on for a little bit or probably I want to say five to almost ten minutes of that going back and forth it was a really big moment, I, get, I suppose. Uh, they really wanted to hit that in the head of like, oh, obviously these two uh, are dealing with their counterparts. Uh, in which, uh, when they arrive and when they get back inside the building, the two counterparts say that they will handle the zombies that have made their way toward them. So we see the two counterparts fight off and the others are just chilling about. They come back in. And moments later, they get in. They show that they are infected. By the way, Madison at some point shown was shown to have symptoms of being infected, and uh, Call had to make the choice of whether to shoot or not, and she he chose not to. And she comes back later in the movie, not being infected, but rather having an allergic reaction. So. These two are infected, and they turn into these so-called T-1000, in which they fight all around the area, getting up to all sorts of, like, oh, they're gonna almost get bit, but then they're gonna save each other, or they're gonna be near each other, and they're gonna bumble around until someone else kind of helps them, or they help each other, or, you know, they go through the, <laughs> this whole uh, gimmick of this as well. Uh, they finally take out the two zombies. So, uh... Tal says his goodbyes for now to Nevada. They kiss. They leave, uh, preparing to embark to Babylon, uh, where a uh, babe, but something like that. I forget what the what the what the pronunciation is, but or what the actual phrase was. But it was like Babylon, I think, um, where um, Little Rock and uh, Berkeley have arrived at a place. Of peace, according to them, in which they drop the guns into whatever, and then they just live in peace in this little area that is surrounded by all these various buses and walls and stuff like that. So eventually, our three others catch up. Um, they get to this area. They eventually sacrifice their weapons as well. And of course, Tallahassee. Tal is the most upset about this. Um, uh, but they get to Little Rock nonetheless, they make sure she's okay, uh, she feels like she belongs there because safety and, it's, it, again, it just seems safe for the moment, uh, but Tal says that he wants to say his goodbyes because he feels like he is a roamer, that he is a natural born zombie killer, so he decides that he's gonna head out, but on his way out he sees that a various army of zombies of varying sorts are making their way to this location uh, and the fireworks that the people are like celebrating are only drawing the zombies in faster and in more of a number so he circles back faster than the zombies can run there obviously um, and he warns everybody there that the zombies are coming in and that they need to set up because the zombies are gonna push on through eventually uh, especially the T-1000 types, and we can even see that some of them have, like, this crawling or climbing capacity to some degree. So they would eventually probably climb their way over anyways. So, without weapons, they provide, uh, alternatives of gas and fire, uh, among other weapons to their disposal when they can get their hands on them. So they let the zombies in and they uh, eventually use, uh, again, the short-ranged weapons that they have, fending off the zombies from their little tower uh, with some assistance from Berkeley and uh, Little Rock, who got separated from the other three. Um, 
and there's some more running and more shooting, or not shooting, but killing, um, to varying degrees of success. Um, and so they have this intense setup of, like, they're luring all of the zombies to this certain location where all the other people that were, weren't immediately there, they all grab these little, like, long uh, metal cylinders, I guess I'll call them, like, to block the zombies on this narrow path and have Tallahassee be sort of the sacrificial lamb and on the edge... Because where this area leads, it's like an edge, a cliff, and then off of the cliff is like a huge drop down. And above the cliff is this hanging crane. So Tallahassee runs towards the crane. He jumps on it and he hangs there, sort of hanging forward. And as soon as he hangs forward, the zombies are already uh, sort of clustering down uh, to the pit. Uh, and as he swings back, he makes sure that uh, he, he's able to kick his way out of any incoming zombies and just the pile on zombies that are falling down, the vast majority. Um, there were two instances of like zombie of the year sort of little gimmicks that they did in the last movie, uh, carrying that over here. And then they, and then um, Cal or Columbus says like, oh, this is zombie kill of the century or something like that. Um, so Tallahassee manages to grip on and stay on as two zombies hang on to him from the legs, uh, and, uh, from there, Little Rock grabs out her, this pistol, which I completely neglected to mention, because it's sort of this really brief scene where, uh, Tallahassee, while they are still in the White House, so kind of an early setup to this, uh, hands her this gift of the gun, uh, wielded by some famous person, I forget which one he mentions at that point, but, um, gives her the gun, she was baked, so she f totally forgot that she had that until, like, sh it wore off, and then she pulls out the gun, takes out the other two, they eventually pull Tallahassee back in, um, and then you see the one last Homer zombie that they, that somehow made its way from wherever it was, from the bus, that we saw them at that stop make it all the way over to this location and then fall off on its own. Um, and we see that Nevada also helped out. She arrived at some point to help them out with the truck. That's how they were able to essentially escape uh, the little tower. They were able to like even do a whole big flip. <laughs> Anyways, that happened at some point prior and then they celebrate that little victory and then the bigger victory of killing all those zombies. So, the four of them decide that they're gonna go on the road again. And just travel and call their home wherever it is the four of them are. And, uh, Wichita also expresses the wedding proposal that, uh, Columbus decided to propose onto her, which is what caused her to leave in the first place. Uh, because she didn't feel like it was ready, because of all this other stuff, divorce, blah blah blah. Oh, excuse me. So, after that, uh, after they ride off, we get to see a little, like, I, I guess a after credits or, you know, little, like, extra thing of, like, Columbus apologizes for, like, oh, um, Bill Murray died and I killed him. So here's like a sneak peek of like how he fared at the very, it would appear at the very early aughts of this zombie apocalypse. So it cuts to him doing an interview for Garfield 3, which, uh, for, which you know, as a comical bit, I almost feel like they, they're they gonna do that movie now. <laughs> like, oops. Um, but yeah, they're promoting Garfield 3 and then, um, Bill Murray, after the interview, uh, sees that one person is getting infected and is, like, trying to attack him, so he attacks back and then leads that building, and then, uh, we see chaos ensue on the outside as he makes his way out, uh, of that area of this, like, little, uh, building, and that's uh, essentially his bit of seeing his entire escape from this little area. So, that was Zombieland Double Tap, and it was a pretty enjoyable film. Um, I do feel like they, 
like the whole Wichita and Columbus thing and th the two females leaving again was sort of like we're kind of retreading and rewinding the characters a little bit here um you know after all however many time, however much they were together it does seem a little odd that they would split up after well, you know whatever they were through between the two movies um so I do think that the premise is a little bit faulty and the characterization starts out a little bit faulty but it's still an enjoyable film kind of it's I definitely would say it's not as good as the first Zombieland um, again I do think that there are some pretty big cracks at the beginning in terms of just like okay this is where you're going uh, does it seem a little bit odd that that's the choice you're making um, and it, you know, it kind of falls under that, um, you know, the whole Little Rock thing leaving, I think I can understand more, because again, she's growing up, she's trying to find someone her own age, fine, I can under, I guess that makes sense enough, but all the other two motivations of, like, Wichita doesn't make any sense, like, why she left too, um, with Little Rock at first, and, like, why, um, Columbus would like so quickly just like oh new girl woo you know it just seems a little bit off um in terms of these two characters um so yeah I, I do think there's some issues again in the beginning there um I do think that there's a little bit of luck involved with that with uh, bumping into Nevada and then having her know the location of where they went and having the, the capacity to get there because they ruined the truck and then she arrives on that truck that's totally fine. Um, again, there are definitely quite a few more uh, either character moments that just feel aren't as strong or just feel a little bit weird. Again, by comparison to the first movie on top of like there are a little bit of gimmicky things of like that doesn't make complete sense within the context of what we saw before. I'm gonna go ahead and give this movie a five out of ten. I do do I do think that they missed quite a bit a few of the marks here in ter in terms of the characterization. Um, some of the comedy was all right, I guess, but um, it does kind of fall flat when the story is kind of breaking apart what you kind of expect to happen and what actually happens. So that's my review for Zombieland Double Tap. And if you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One to head over to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Until next time, everyone. Bye bye.